Well, hello there, GRC320. This is lab one, and we're going to go over um, the uh, syllabus, the lab syllabus, as well as the assignment number one for the lab, which is the um, product and service game. Just quick uh, introduction to the lab here. Um, this is the syllabus. It's actually found on Canvas as well as a PDF. Uh, the laboratory portion of 320 provides the following experiences. It exhibits a various quality uh, improvement in statistical process control tools that are used in the graphic communication industry. It exhibits quality improvement in statistical process control methods and how they are used an experience in working cooperatively in groups and teams to solve quality problems, practice in making class presentations and leading class discussions, and the integration of quality improvement and statistical process control tools in a simulated graphic communication company environment. Um, those are all uh, kind of like a nutshell as far as what we're gonna be doing in, in this uh, Quarter, you, you see a lot of stuff about process quality control tools, you see stuff about statistics. Just hang in there. Um, quite a, many of these labs are fun, um, and uh, they don't just all involve math and statistics. So you'll, you'll be using quite a bit of tools, and I will show you that uh, will help you in your endeavor in um, uh, whatever uh, portion of the industry you go into. The two labs are asynchronous. However, I do have. Um, I have found that this, uh, I've been offering this for the last couple of quarters. I, I do this thing called a live lab on specific labs that I know you might have some questions on. And what I do is I pull you, I'll pull you at the beginning of the quarter. Hey, what's, what's a good time if that we, you, know, you can all meet um, during the week uh, that I can just record this lab and you have questions, you can post, you can ask me and I can go over the whole lab with you. I'll record it and then I will post that as well in that week's module. That way we have, you know, the best of both worlds of a synchronous and an asynchronous uh, environment in doing our labs because I really want to make sure I am offering as much as I can to get you on track with the lab and so we're all on the same page and you don't have any questions uh, that are not unanswered. Okay, so the, uh, the password for the uh, course back is the GRC320 underscore 3855. It's free, which is good news. Uh, just a quick, I, uh, quick um, uh, synopsis of what we're gonna be doing this uh, quarter in the labs. Obviously there's, a, there's 11 weeks, um, so the first week we're going to be going over the lab intro. That's today. That's this. That's this uh, assignment. Um, that's ten points. Uh, week two we're going to be going over flow charts and process mapping. And you can see there I've given you the pages that we'll launch, I want you to read in the course pack. Uh, that's twenty points. Uh, lab three. Week three is brainstorm and fishbone and why why twenty points. Check sheets on uh, week four ten points. Pareto charts, week five, 10 points. X-bar, uh, the, um, the moving range charts, uh, that's 25 points, that's week six. And scatter plots, week seven, that's 10 points. And then the Kanban, the TPS lane, that you're going to create your own Trello board and submit it to me, that's week eight, and that's 20 points. And then on week nine and week 11, which is sandwiched between the Thanksgiving holiday, I have basically what I call an open lab where I can just, you know, um, I can do a, I, I can actually just open up a, the, uh, a time that, you know, you guys can talk to me about your um, applied quality project, go over with me, your, your data and all that. So I just wanna make sure that we give those two weeks prior to the final, you, you're wrapping up your project and you're able to meet with the groups at, at, during that time. And then, of course, week 10 is Thanksgiving. That whole, there's no labs that whole week. And then we have the final, which is on 1210, which is 410 to 7 p.m., which fortunately is a Friday. Um, and that is your AQP uh, final presentation. Total uh, points for the um, lab is 125 points. Uh, what I would like you to do is to, you know, have access to your course pack when you're doing the labs, obviously, bring uh, lectures. Uh, the overall quality of each lab activity should be neat, clean, thorough, and adhere to the assignment parameters. 
essentially, if you're going to be giving me a, you know, a, a hand drawn um, piece of paper for your assignment that's required to do as a PDF, you're not, that's not adhering to the requirements. Lab uh, assignments are, will be completed and submitted to the instructor by Sunday of the week of the lab. So essentially, like say, like the flow charts, uh, which is on week two, you're going to be turn, turning those in to me by 11.59 p.m. Uh, on October 3rd. So you have a whole week to do the whole labs, which is kind of cool. Um, and each student will complete his or her own work. Um, there's no makeup labs. Um, if you miss a lab, uh, unfortunately, it will you know, reduce your score. Uh, so make sure, since this is asynchronous, you have a whole week to do it. So I'm assuming that um, if there's extenuating circumstances, um, please talk to me. But otherwise than that, there is no missing labs. And then while talking about the lab activity with your fellow classmates is a courage, you are expected to turn in your own work. So I don't want to see people turning in work that's basically mirroring another person's. I want you to really do it, do this yourself. And some of the some of these are I'm outside your comfort zone, I realize, but that's why I have those live labs that we can go over. I really want to help you out as far as how to turn this stuff in on your own. And I want to hear from your views. I don't want to hear from your classmates' views. And please do not share your lab assignments. So while you know, a healthy discussion with your classmates is encouraged, but please do not collaborate and turn in work that's collaborated. Make sure this is all done on your own. Now, since this is a, a quality, uh, uh, a, a course about quality, there is thing, there is unfortunately some uh, demerits for non-conformance, essentially with things that are not, uh, uh, not in, not, not, that are not, quality so such as if you um if you don't do a single space on your lab write-ups as a one-point deduction all lab write-ups including graphs will be 12 point times new roman just make sure you have that 12 point times new roman as your default font at all of the lab assignments all lab files will be named according to the header specifications there's a one-point deduction if that's not the case and all graphs and uh, write-ups must have centered a uh, header in your documents, in your Word documents, or in your other uh, Adobe documents, um, and with the appropriate uh, file naming specifications, there's another one-point deduction. All graphs and tables will be incorporated into your lab, your, your write-up assignment. Uh, there's a one-point uh, per graph table that's not inserted. And then lab activities, obviously, this must be turned in on time. There's points deduction if they're not turned on time. And then on Canvas submission, there's a one point deduction if assignment does not meet the um, submission requirements. So say like you turn in a Word document which required to do a PDF, then you're gonna have a, a point deduction. And this is all shown into the rubrics of the uh, lab assignments as well. And now uh, just keep in mind, it's like, why do you do this? Why, why are we having all these point deductions? Well. Remember, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get into a mindset of conformance, conformance to the customer's requirements. I am the customer on this case as because I am consuming what you're, what you're producing. So what I'm requiring is this. So this I really want you to strike into the mindset of, you know, trying to meet the voice of the customer, which is the, these requirements. Uh, there are PDF and header naming specifications. So each PDF file email subject line will require to be named and saved as your last name, underscore the lab activity, underscore the course and lab number. So whatever course, the GRC 320, but whatever lab number you're in, and then the quarter. So it'd be like Smith, underscore check sheets, underscore GRC 320, 02, underscore fall 21. And the same thing with uh, uh, naming uh, documents in Word and Excel, if that is required. Um, and then in uh, the headers, you would just create a header uh, in Word if you're submitting a like a flow chart or something like that that's been created into a document and, or in Excel. You're gonna make sure you, have, you, you include a header on there. Uh, copying graphs is copy C. We're not going to necessarily use Minitab uh, um, per se, but if we do, if is there a case that we are using Minitab or we're creating graphs as a third party that we want to import those into a uh, separate document and save that. 
um, such as in Excel. We're going to be doing quite a bit of work in Excel. So if you wanted to do it, a, a, a graph in Excel, you'd copy that graph, put it in Word, and then you do your write-up in Word, and it'll all be on one document. Okay, so see, so I was obviously save your files to your computer or to your OneDrive. Um, and then, of course, keep in mind the naming configuration. So uh, just to say at the lab, 125 points, it goes all the way up until dead week uh, to the last two weeks, uh, actually essentially the last three weeks of the quarter, you'll be using that time to working with your groups to start developing your projects for your AQP, which we'll go over in another uh, video. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about what, what's the first lab. The first lab is a game I developed um, actually it was for another quarter, it was another course was 411, but I, we, we, we go over this in week one and week two in GRS 320 about product and service, you know, in order to, you know, what is the conformance for requirements for, for the voice of the customer and these product and services. And then the product um, and the service both have to be met at a conformance level that pleases the customer in order to be a successful um, outcome. You can't just have a satisfaction in the service and a failure in the product that would result in the, a failure of that whole experience. The, both the product and the service has to be in conformance to the requirements. So what I thought would be kind of cool is for you guys to come up with uh, your own product and service. So you can kind of see, just see how the strategic end is on, on developing a business. So what we have is we have uh, three cards in the, in the game. There was a business model on the blue cards. The red card was the product. And then the modality of that, um, I'm sorry, the, the modality was the blue card. The red card was the product. And then the gray card was the service. So what you do is we pick, uh, the teams would pick three cards and then randomly they'd have to come up with a business model that served the modality and it served and uh, had uh, the combination of the product and service that was given on the card. So what we're going to do is you're going to go with your last name. So this is you're going to be doing this as individual, and there is an outcome on this as far as a paper goes. So, so if your uh, your last name um, starts with an A, B, or C, your service is going to be insurance. So remember, a service is different than the product because say like if you buy a phone, you buy the hard tangible product, right? Which is the phone, but then you that phone is useless without the internet connectivity and all the other services that enable that phone to work. So you can see that there's two functions, there's two aspects of that particular uh, consumer, consumer entity um, of the phone that are, have to be met. So the service is insurance, transportation, personal health. It could be a dating portal, a tattoo, a piercing, real estate, software, parcel delivery, or medical testing. So those are all the service of the services that I have uh, put in here. And you're going to be choosing your service by the letter of the last name or the initial of your last name. In addition, you're going to choose a product. So say if your uh, last name begins with JVB, you're going to choose human hygiene. So if JVB would be, say if your last name was J, you would be dating portal, and then your, your product would have to be human hygiene. So you'd have to combine those two and come up with the, come up with a product uh, and a, you know, that, that mirrors those two. So I don't know what that would be. That's why we use your imagination. So I hope that I understand. So you have human hygiene, you got fast food, pet supplies, electronics, baby apparel, housing construction, beverage, specialty food, and then you have firearms. Okay, and then the business model, this is something you choose on your own. So it could be a mobile app, you know, the, how is this uh, product and service gonna be uh, marketed? Uh, is it gonna be, you know, through a mobile app? Is it gonna be through social media? Is it gonna be like a mobile, like a food truck? Uh, mail order magazine, door to door, a, a physical location, brick and mortar, or a subscription service. So you'd pick one of these eight modalities for your um, project. So here's an example. So say your last name is Barton, 
for for service you would choose uh, for service you would choose insurance because that's where that falls B for product you would choose human hygiene which is B which is human hygiene and then you choose a business model so my task was to come up with a business that incorporates insurance services with human hygiene products and I chose the mobile application as my business model so um, I chose a subscription um, service and that provides long-term health care coverage and delivers adult diapers uh, discreetly to my customers. So I know it says a subscription, but I'm using that subscription via a mobile application. So, you know, you just have to tell me in your project how you want to do that. So you could choose a subscription and then, you know, obviously go to a uh, mobile or an app or something like that. So that's what I chose to do. So again, um, subscription app, I'm creating that provides long-term healthcare coverage and delivers adult diapers discreetly to my customers. Bonafide business. So what I want you to do is to complete the lab. So you guys have seen Shark Tank. If you haven't, maybe YouTube it or something like that and just take a look at it. So it's basically it's a Shark Tank five minute pitch that these people present to these sharks or these, uh, um, you know, uh, people who want to invest in their company. And then they, the people who, if they have a successful pitch, they uh, invest in the company. So you, you want to write your script of what you would say to possible investors and be innovative as you can to develop a product and service. Be really go, you be creative, have some fun with it and operates in the business model that you selected. And then choose to do devote 45 to 60 minutes to develop your business with the product and service appointed to you and then the business model of your choice. So you know, take around an hour to really think this thing through. And then in 15 to 30 minutes to design comp, you could do this in Illustrator, you can do this in Photoshop, best to do this on the computer and you know, come up with a logo that you can incorporate with your pitch. You know? And so you're, gonna, you're going to um, write down uh, a one to, tw one to two minute script uh, that has your name, your GRC concentration in year, what is your business name? What is your business name? You have to come up with a business name that incorporates the, uh, the product and service. And then tell me what your product and service was, what you chose. I mean, what was given to you? And then what was your business model? That is what you chose. And what, is, what does your business do? You know, what is it? How, what is it? Be specific. Tell me exactly what you're going to be doing with your particular uh, business. And then show us your logo and tell us what it means. Put that onto the, uh, to the document. And then pick a competitor who's in the same business uh, as close as you can and tell us what makes your different, what makes your business different. This is called differentiation. So how is your business different than say an Amazon or a uh, uh, Target or whatever? And then who is your customer base? Who exactly are you trying to target for your customers? And then submit your file to Canvas. So you probably do this in a, in a Word document or InDesign or, and then you incorporate your logo and your script and all that in that one nice, neat document, make a PDF, and then you would submit that to me uh, via Canvas. And then from there, I would grade it and go over it. So I hope this makes sense. And if that, uh, if you have any questions, obviously you can you know, reach me in Slack or we can, we could talk about it in a class. Um, but this is due the first week of school.